In this video, we're going to look at another instance where quantized integers happen to uh, pop out when you look at the formula which predict a physical phenomenon. What we're going to be talking about is the spectra for uh, atoms. And it was noted uh, quite early on in the 18th century that if you took some sample of an element, so you took some sample of atoms, and then you heated them up, then they would emit radiation, and then you could, if you have some type of detector for this radiation, you can build a spectrum of all of the different emission wavelengths which occur from that individual atom. So various different elements have different emission spectra and the one we're going to talk about is the hydrogen atom. So if we have a continuum here going from let's say the visible region is here and the infrared the IR region is here. Then over on the left, we have the UV, the ultraviolet. So this would be a scale of wavelength, generally denoted by lambda, where it's increasing to the right. Infrared radiation has lower energy and a higher wavelength than visible light. So this dividing line here is about 700 nanometers. This dividing line here is about 400 nanometers. Okay, so if you heat up a sample of hydrogen, in this case, what you'll see is in the visible region, you end up getting four lines. You get one that's red, you get one that's green, you get one that's blue, and then one right at the edge the visible spectrum that's purple. Sometimes it's hard for some people to see it, but you do end up getting four lines in the visible spectrum. Then if you have a more general detector than just your eye, you can see that these lines continue until there's a large number of them that stop just into the UV range. And this was first noticed by a scientist named Balmer. And these set of lines are called the Balmer series. So it was noticed that for the Balmer series, if you want to predict the wavelengths of these line spectra, that in order to do that, and say um, sometimes spectroscopists like to use this new bar or inverse wavelength. So new bar equals 1 over lambda. New bar for the Balmer series is equal to this constant, 109.680. This unit is inverse centimeters, so wavelength here is in nanometers. This is in 1 over wavelength, so this would be in 1 over nanometers, but in this case we're doing it in 1 over centimeters, 1 over wave numbers. And that constant times 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over n squared where n is an integer which is greater than 2. So it belongs to the set of integers and is larger than 2. Now that's kind of interesting that it would display this type of structure here, but as you see you get a very very as n gets higher you get a very very large number of of um, spectrum of lines here and eventually you get to 1 over infinity which is which becomes zero, and then you just get one over two squared times times this. So this number divided by four gives you the last line in this spectrum here, which converges to a finite value. Then it was noticed that there's another set of lines up in the UV region that again become increasingly tight and converge to some value there. And this set of values is referred to as 
the Lyman series, probably named after some scientist named Lyman. And then same thing within the IR region. It was noticed that there was a line, set of lines which converge ultimately right before the visible region. And this set of lines named, I believe it's pronounced the Passion series. Don't quote me on that. Okay, so we got these various lines here. But then it was noticed that for the Lyman series, you got the same constant times 1 over 1 squared this time, minus 1 over n squared, where n is a number greater than 1, and also an integer. And similarly for the Passion series, you might guess that we get 109680 wave numbers times 1 over 3 squared minus 1 over n squared. And this time n is greater than 3, and n is also an integer. So by now you might be detecting a pattern with all these various line series. And indeed, there are more and more series as you go farther and farther to the right to larger and larger wavelengths where this equal this first number here equals 4 and then 5 etc so then a scientist named Rydberg came along and made a more general formula for this series so first we define this constant the Rydberg constant as this 109680 wave numbers and then the Rydberg formula as it is called for predicting any the position of any line on the hydrogen atom spectrum becomes this new bar equals the Rydberg constant times 1 over n1 squared minus 1 over n2 squared. Again, noting that n2 2 is always greater than n1, and n1 and n2 are both integers. So this was quite interesting that the line spectra for the hydrogen atom would display a very regular formula like this depending on these two integers. And then later on we of course discovered that this is displaying a transition between two different energy levels in the hydrogen atom. In later videos we'll look at the energy levels of the hydrogen atom. And in fact the hydrogen atom does have a discrete set of energy of energy levels which you could describe as n equals 1, 2, 3, etc. And the differences in these energy levels end up becoming the lines on these spectra. And this was noticed long before we knew about the quantization of these energy levels here. So that was kind of interesting at the time. And uh, shortly after this, Niels Bohr would come along with a model for the hydrogen atom, which would much better explain this result.